So you've just bought your first guitar, or banjo, or ukulele, or whatever that thing is. Whatever, it's all good. But whatever it is, whether it's electric or acoustic, you want to know a little bit more about what it is you're getting into. I'm Sev, and in this video we're going to go over the anatomy of your new instrument. Even though these things developed all over the world, stringed instruments all share a pretty common layout. We'll look at the guitar for the most part, however at the end of this we'll look at some other similar instruments and see how this layout differs. And you'll be surprised because they aren't as different as you might think. So starting at the top we have the head. The head contains the tuning keys, which are used for tensioning and tuning the strings, and the nut, which is the upper limit of the length of the string that vibrates. If your guitar has steel strings, you may also see a little bolt behind the nut or a little plastic cover. This is the adjuster for the truss rod, which we'll get to soon enough. Moving down, we have the neck. On the front of the neck, we have the fretboard. The fretboard contains all of the frets, which is, obviously, where you put your fingers while you're playing. In some guitars, the frets are laid directly onto the neck. And on some guitars, they're laid into a separate piece of wood, which is then attached to the front of the neck. The fretboard will also have a series of designs down the length of it. They could be dots, triangles, or whatever. These are known as fret markers, and they're basically shorthand for guitar players. These markers show the locations of the 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, and 12th frets. This pattern then repeats for the 15th, 17th, 19th, 21st, and 24th frets. If your guitar has steel strings, there will also be a metal rod running down the inside of the neck. This metal rod is called a truss rod, and it runs the entire length of the neck. It's slightly bowed, and allows you, or your trained guitar professional, to straighten the neck if it becomes curved. The reason nylon stringed instruments don't have a truss rod is that nylon strings don't generally exert enough pressure on the neck to cause it to bow. Moving on, we have the guitar body. This is where we really start to see the difference between acoustics and electrics. An acoustic guitar has a hollow body, when a string is played, the vibration is fed into the front face of the guitar, which then vibrates all of the air inside the chamber, and then the noise escapes out of the sound hole. An electric guitar uses a number of pickups, which convert the physical motion of the string into an electrical signal. Then you've got your controls for volume, tone, and pickup selection. Lastly, we have the bridge. This is where the strings attach to the body and provide the lower limit of the length of string that vibrates. And that's it guitars in a nutshell. But how do other stringed instruments differ? Excellent question! Let's look at some of the other main instruments. Ukuleles are just like an acoustic guitar, but the tuning is different. And I mean way different. Orchestral stringed instruments have the same form as an acoustic guitar, with the exception that they don't have frets. On a fretted instrument, you place your finger behind the fret. On a fretless, you place your finger where the fret would be. They tend to be tuned differently, and orchestral strings generally don't have a truss rod because they don't use steel strings. Banjos are just like an acoustic guitar, except that the front face of the body isn't a solid piece of wood. It's more like a drum skin. As they have steel strings, they may or may not have a truss rod. A Chapman stick? And now you're just showing off. 